These stories up next. The storm has let up, but the work has not. Road crews are still hard at work getting ready for the Monday morning commute. And the baseball players and owners say they are at an impasse. President Clinton says keep talking. News Channel 13 Live at 11 is up next. If you ignore the emergency snow parking rules tonight, don't worry. The city will move it for you. But you're going to have to pay big bucks to get it back. They are towing the cars to make way for snow removal, a fight against the clock, to get ready for the morning commute. And President Clinton warns of federal intervention in an ongoing dispute. News Channel 13 Live at 11 is up next. From WNYT, Albany, this is News Channel 13 Live at 11. Tonight's top story, as the capital region digs out from the weekend storm, President Clinton is trying to turn the nation's attention to spring. Spring training, that is. Good evening. With just hours to go now until the Monday morning deadline, there is still no deal to baseball. And angry President Clinton now stands ready to intervene. He is threatening to use the power of the Oval Office to get the players back on the diamond. NBC's Tom Pettit reports. President Clinton's special baseball mediator said the two sides are far apart. Bill Lassery said he will make recommendations for presidential action tomorrow. We have narrowed the issues to somewhat, and I'm still hoping that we can narrow them even more uh, before tomorrow. A key question, will he recommend binding arbitration, which would require congressional approval? I didn't say anything about arbitration. I'm in, in the, uh, here in the effort of trying to reach a voluntary agreement. Before going to the White House for a preliminary report to Labor Secretary Robert Reich and other top Clinton aides, Ussery had met separately with the opposing sides with no success. Players like all-star Cecil Fielder autographing his own portrait. Veteran Dave Winfield and other big-name athletes were again unable to agree with the owners and vice versa. Presidential intervention now is almost inevitable. The president threw out the first ball in Cleveland last year in the season that ended August 12th, killing the World Series for the first time since 1904. Today in New York Newsday, the president said he's become frustrated about the baseball situation saying it's a metaphor for what's wrong with this country sometimes. A lot of money controlled by a few people who can't decide how to divide it up. The talks are as frozen as Yankee Stadium was today. A lot of people back home are saying, what are you doing home? Why aren't you pushing yourself to give a shot, a second chance? In Florida, some teams are trying out non-union replacement players for a 1995 season. The idea of replacement teams has been very controversial. The Boston Red Sox tried to sell season tickets last week with few takers. Baltimore said it wouldn't even play unless the strike is over. New York Yankee fans and former players said no one will win. And again, everybody loses. The owners, the poor players, and the fans. The fan loses the most because he loses trust in the owners, the players, and his, his, his innocence and love of the game. Tonight, the White House told Ussery to go make one last try to mediate. If that fails, he'll be back with some ideas on how the president can break the baseball deadlock. Tom Pettit, NBC News, at the White House. They are still cleaning up in Albany. The Public Works Department has been working on the roads around the clock, and the job is not done yet. All day, 21 plows have been pushing the snow into big piles, and tonight, half a dozen front-end loaders are scooping it up into dump trucks to be carried away. Albany's Deputy Public Works Commissioner says the city's snow plan the is working well. A lot of direction on how he wants this handled and, uh, and instrumental in uh, meeting with us as yesterday morning very early to talk about snow emergency and uh, our plans for removal tonight. And his objective, main objective, is get the streets cleaned uh, so they're safe and uh, pedestrians have somewhere to walk. The drivers have nice, clean, safe streets to drive on. Gadani says people can do their part to expedite snow removal by following the city's parking rules. The emergency parking rules are still in effect in many parts of our area. First in Albany, by now you have to move your car parked to the odd-numbered side of the street. In Rotterdam, there is no parking on any town roads. In Schenectady, you need to have your car parked on the odd-numbered side of the street as well. And in Troy, you can park according to the normal parking rules until 8 tomorrow morning. In Castleton, there is no parking on town roads. And finally, Pittsfield has also declared a snow emergency. There will be no parking on any city streets, especially overnight. The 13 inches of snow that fell this weekend prompted those snow emergency parking rules, and that apparently caught some Albany residents, residents by surprise. News Channel 13's Monica Mahaffey has their story. 
The first big snowstorm of winter 95 has a lot of people steamed. Almost 300 cars were towed for violating the snow emergency parking rules. There were as many excuses as there were cars towed. I figured probably it's not the right, the right place, but um, I tried to find another spot, but there was nowhere where I could leave it. Two cars, her car, my girlfriend's car, and my car. So a real bad. We had to walk about three miles just to get here, and now she's going to get her car. Hopefully I got mine over here too. Well, I, I knew of, obviously that there was a snow, snow emergency, but I didn't know that they were so quick to act upon it, you know. The tow costs $70. The city gets 15 of that, and the truck driver gets $17.50. The rest goes to the garage. Dot's garage on Central Avenue has been waiting for a storm. They picked up 70 cars. 70, that's not a bad night, but last year when we do, we, we'd average like 100 cars a night. So, so economically, yes. snow has a good impact on you. Yes, this is our first one of the year. You know, we're, We've been waiting, and finally we cashed in. Some Albany residents were lucky enough to get to their car before it was on the hook. They only got the $30 parking ticket. However, not all of them saw it as good fortune. You're not getting towed. There's a truck on the way. I canceled the truck. You're giving me a ticket? Yep. But why? Because you were supposed to move it at 8 o'clock last night. Like. How am I supposed to move it? If I don't have to move it, how am I going to move it? Now, here are the rules. On an even day, you park on the even side of the street around 8 p.m. On an odd day, you park on the odd side of the street at 8 p.m. Otherwise, you'll be towed. That's for Albany and Schenectady. In Troy, odd-even parking starts at 8 a.m. In Albany, Monica Mahaffey, News Channel 13. A Skodak man is at Albany Medical Center after being hit by a car on Route 150 in Skodak. 55-year-old Wesley Van Oort was using his snowblower at the time. His injuries are not life-threatening. 24-year-old Richard Greenway of Castleton was the driver. He lost control while rounding a curve. Greenway was ticketed for imprudent speed for weather conditions. And now Bob joins us for the first look at your forecast. All right, Elaine, let's talk about tomorrow morning. Definitely a bundle-up morning. Uh, we have very low wind chill factors with a sunrise at 7.04 a.m. Cloudy skies, perhaps a few snow flurries. Air temperatures right around 2 below zero on average, but the wind chill quite low. And look at the high temperature tomorrow, getting up to maybe 7 above with a little bit of afternoon sunshine and sunset at 5.15 p.m. We'll check the cold news. Well, we have to do it. Uh, you may want to not listen, but we have to do it in a few minutes. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot, Bob. Capital Region residents spent the day after the big storm digging out and taking advantage of the conditions. News Channel 13's Julie Wilcox went out to see how people are coping. Capital Region residents woke to an unusual sight this morning, a blanket of white covering the area. After months of waiting, winter in all its pristine beauty has arrived. Now, I am sick of it, yes. I've had enough. Yeah, I thought we'd lucked out pretty much so far, so this one I can deal with, as long as it's the end of it. No more? No more. No, thank you. Having to shovel a foot of this stuff will put a damper on winter enthusiasm. Was it completely snowed in when you started? Yeah, and then the plow came by and made it worse. Things were looking a bit better in Clifton Park, where Harold Snyder didn't bother with shovels. It's a lot easier than doing it by hand. Meanwhile, in Niskayuna, Alan Weinstock got a good dose of bad luck. He started up his snowblower yesterday, only to find it no longer worked. Would you like to see more snow? Or is no, it's be fine. <laughs> Definitely. But there's not a snow critic to be found among the younger set. Just take a look at the Sand Creek Middle School in Colony. All this under strict adult supervision from the car with the heater on. I noticed all the parents are staying in the cars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who wants to go out there? It's too cold. They don't care. They go for it. They stay out there for hours. Julie Wilcox, News Channel 13. The Kingston woman burned over 70% of her body in her hospital bed at Albany Medical Center has died. 79-year-old Lillian Merhurt died on Friday at the Westchester County Medical Center. Merhurt's bed caught fire a week ago and investigation continues, but the fire is believed to have been started by careless smoking. Albany Med does not allow patients or staff to smoke in the hospital. An overnight apartment fire claims the lives of a mother and her two small children. We'll have that story and we'll have a look back at winter's long-awaited comeback this weekend up next. Live, local, late-breaking.
with Elaine Houston, meteorologist Paul Cayano, and Big Board Sports with Roger Wyman. This is News Channel 13. Live at 11. A defiant China is shrugging off $1.8 billion in U.S. trade sanctions. The sanctions were announced yesterday. Chinese officials say other trading partners will pick up the slack. Beijing announced its own tariffs in response to the U.S. move, but analysts doubt any all-out trade war will result. The sanctions won't take effect for three weeks, leaving time to strike a deal. Senate leaders say the dispute could be very damaging to the two countries' economic relations. Well, we have 20, February 26. My view is I'm going to be meeting with the Chinese ambassador. Hopefully we can still work out something. I think we get into a trade war. Uh, we don't gain and they don't gain a great deal. But uh, and it's going to make it much harder to extend the most favored nation status if this is not worked out. The moves follow the collapse of talks aimed at reining in Chinese piracy of U.S. copyrights, trademarks, and patents. And why not? Why a miner who had been trapped underground for two days has died. He was found alive this morning but went into cardiac arrest while being rescued. Fifty-five workers were in the mine when an earthquake shook the region Friday morning. Two of them were trapped. Rescuers found the other man yesterday evening. He's been hospitalized in good condition. At least one person is dead after today's explosion of a tanker truck carrying liquid petroleum in Oakland, California. Eyewitnesses say the truck hit a guardrail on an elevated interchange, then flipped over and blew up. The truck's cab crushed through the highway below. The blast sent a fireball 100 feet into the air. A tragic apartment fire in East Hartford, Connecticut this morning claims the life of a mother and two small children. Investigators say 38-year-old Laura Lopez was downstairs in her home when she saw the flames just after midnight. Lopez ran next door to call a neighbor for help and then re-entered the house to try and save her children. She never made it back. Bob Kovacic is up next with the windy, cold forecast, but first, here are tonight's winning daily lottery numbers.